Hello and welcome back to the channel. Okay, so in this video, I want to walk through a simple extension I've built recently to allow you to snooze tabs in Chrome. So what it essentially does is if I move over to the side here, um, let's just add the extension. So it uses very minimal permissions, which I'll go through in a moment. So we can add the extension here. It doesn't show any warnings because of the permissions that it uses. And it has this little icon. So once we tap onto this, it gives you the option to snooze a tab. These are the default options here. I'll probably add more here in the future and it's fully open source. So if you wanna add your own custom ones, you can. So if I go ahead and click snooze for 10 minutes, it will disappear. If I reopen the extension now, I can see that I've got that tab snooze just here and I can remove it and open it if I want to. I can just cancel it and that will So it's a very, very simple extension, but it's similar to if you've ever used like snoozing emails in Gmail, it's that sort of same flow. So let's go through the code and look at exactly how this works. And if you want to take a look at the source code, you can see it here. If you want to suggest any new features, you, know, you can feel free to you know, create a pull request or add an issue. So let's look at the code for this. Okay, so starting with the manifest, we can see the permissions that we're using. So I wanted to make it use the least amount of permissions possible to make a reliable experience here. So firstly, we use storage to be able to track which URLs users snoozed and then know when to bring these back. We use active tab to be able to get the URL information of the tab. So we're not using the actual tab permission because we don't need you know, to know all of the URLs that are open, just the one that the user acts on. So once they click on the extension icon, that uses the active tab permission to allow us to get the URL for that active page. So again, that's just a way of using minimal permissions for what we actually need. And then we have the alarms permissions. This lets us um, basically work out how long from now we need to reopen the, the uh, tab. And it sets an alarm within the extension to reopen, basically wake the service worker at that point. And whenever the service worker wakes up, it goes through and checks all of the uh, parts in our storage for which URLs need to open. So that's a, a quick run through of what it does, but let's just have a look at the actual photo now. So we have our service worker, but we very straightforward. Then we have our pop-up here and then just our icon. So for this icon, I actually used ChatGPT to make that. I just told it to make an icon for a snooze tabs extension. I had to like slightly adjust it a little bit because the sizing was different, you know, because the icon has to be a specific size. But after that, it was fairly straightforward and that's what the icon looks like. I had to then use another tool to actually make it transparent because they had like a, a white background. So that's basically the manifest. So let's go into the pop-up page now and have a quick look there. This is the HTML that we use. We have some styling up here, which I won't go into. And then it's very straightforward. So we just have our, our snooze buttons just here. So these are hard coded right now. The plan here is to go through the steps we need to take to use this on mobile. So for Safari and then for Firefox and Android. So that'll be in later videos. So as we go into that, I'll show how we can actually, you know, improve these a little bit as well. And then down here, we have a way to actually list if there's any tabs that are already snooze, we list them down here. And then we're just adding our script. So this is all vanilla JS, trying to keep it as simple as possible so we can see how we can actually build real example extensions. Just a quick look at the, the styling up here. This is where we set the width of that pop-up. So a few questions about that from time to time. That's how you do it. Just set it on the body of the page here and that'll adjust it. So that's all we have in here. So if we look in the, the pop-up.js down here, this is how it's all linked together. So right now you can see these are hard coded and it's based on an hour. So you can see the snooze tab function. So this is in hours, like I said. So you can see we have one hour is one, one day, 24, one week, and then 10 minutes as an example of how you can actually split that back. So once we have that, we can have a look at how the actual function works here. So first we are getting the current tab. So like I said, we use the active tabs permission. Um, so we don't need to have the whole tabs permission. This is open, but because we have that permission, we're able to access this URL property just here. So this is just a check here to make sure that it's working. And then we calculate the time based on the hours. We set an alarm name. So this is when we use Chrome alarms how that can all work just there. And then we're saving this into local storage with that name, you know, that key. So we have our URL, the time, which is you know, set up here and then the title. So we know what this looks like in the UI. Could just use the URL, but I think it looks a bit cleaner having that. Then we are creating the alarm. So we use that just with 
the the key here and then when it needs to you know uh, be set for and then as soon as that's done we're going to close that tab and that essentially is the whole part complete let me just have this response here and there's a few ways you could do this nicer maybe actually using something in the pop-up but for now keep it as simple as possible and then the same way for when a tab is removed so that button the user can click it's down here i'll go into that in a moment um so let's look at that first so when the pop-up is opened we run this list news function and this is basically doing exactly the same in reverse so it's grabbing from local storage and it's finding all of the items we have in here so we're ordering them by which ones are gonna wake up first and then from there we just order it and then this is really you know quite rough in here but it's just going through and then creating a list element to go into this area just here so in snooze list yeah this is where we set our snooze list element we we'll probably actually move that closer just so it's clearer we could even put it right in here so that's where we set that so we clear out first and so you can see which ones we have so we just set in some basic styling and then we have our remove button so basically as soon as the user clicks onto this button that will take them to this remove snooze so if we come back up here now this is all we do here is we're just sending a confirmation message asking the user if they want to open the tab first like you want to remove and open the tab if they say yes then we remove it and as soon as it happens we open the tab if they don't then we just clear it without opening the tab and then we just the important part here is that we refresh the list afterwards that's all of this part and then in the service worker itself this is where we have the logic to um so we have the alarms and this does a couple of things so we have like a, a lock in there so when we're receiving one alarm we're not going to open multiple tabs you know if there was some that were close together and say the device was asleep when the alarm would have originally gone off this is just a little safety to avoid you know, that happening. The main part here is that we are listening for the alarms. We have the alarm name, so we know what the alarm is. And we also have this fallback set interval that would fire as well. So the way sort of the service workers work is they're, they're awake for a certain amount of time and then they will go to sleep when there's no activity. So say there are some alarms that are close together or for some reason the device isn't you know responding at that point, it's just a little fallback we can use. So if the alarm goes off, it's gonna call this function, but at the same time, if for whatever reason this missed and didn't work, as long as it's still within that time frame, the, the interval will run again, this is every five minutes, and that will then fall back and it just calls that same function. So if we look in here, we could probably reduce this, but this is, shouldn't really ever be used, but it's just there as a fallback. Then we have in this function just here, we're using this is checking tabs to avoid these from running, you know, multiple times at the same time or like concurrently. So we set this to true straight away. If it's already true, then we just skip it. Then we have uh, a track in here, which we use to use finally to release it. Inside here, we then do a couple of things. So we grab all of the items again from storage, similar to in the pop-up and we are then going over all of these so if there were say two urls that were about to be displayed at the same time we wouldn't need to run this function each time that's why we need this just here otherwise each one would then cause the other one to open if that makes sense so then what we're basically doing is checking to see if we're already processing the items this is similar to the check up here so we can skip that so what we do here is we set it to true to avoid duplicates and then update it straight away. Then we reopen the tab and then remove it from storage. And it's as simple as that really. That's all, that's the main part of, of the extension. And then we can set this back down to false if it, if it didn't like reopen properly. And yeah, um, so that's the, the main uh, flow of the extension. So as you can see, there are all the, all the different files and that's how it works. So if we go over to the extension again, we can snooze for 10 minutes. We open now, we can see it's just here. Yes, yeah, so that is the, the general flow of, of building extension, how to get um, tab snoozing into Chrome as a, a feature in here. I think maybe at some point there should be something that's really built into the browser. I can imagine it like being right here, 
snooze this tab or something. Um, that could be that could be quite useful. If you've got any questions on the extension, if you want to like clone this and make it your own, or if you've got any feature suggestions, please do let me know. And look out for a video coming soon on how we can make this work in Safari on mobile on iOS and Firefox on Android. Um, I think it could be interesting to see this on a mobile device as well. Anyway, thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video.